This video is sponsored by Embato Elements. Today using Apple Motion, we're gonna create this logo animation. It's inspired by Flimleon Visual Effects' After Effects tutorial, and it was requested by a viewer. However, I couldn't find the comment that you sent me, so I'm sorry, I can't shout you out, but leave a comment down below. The first thing we're gonna do is hit up Envato Elements, the sponsor of this video, to find a logo. I'm just gonna type in simple logo. And right here on the far left side, I find the Monsta logo. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. Once I downloaded it, I opened it up in Pixelmator Pro, and then I exported it as a motion project. Now that we have the motion project, let's go ahead and set the duration of our project down to the length of our logo. Go into our project settings, select Inspector, Properties, and change it from Custom over to 4K Ultra HD, or you could do 1080, whichever you prefer. Then I'm gonna select the group and drag it down so that our logo is nice and centered. First, I'm gonna rename this to be the Fill Base. Then I'm gonna click on this down arrow and show all of the paths. I'm gonna hold Shift and select all of them and set the fill color to white. Then I'm gonna push Command D to duplicate it and I'm gonna rename this to be the Outline Base. I'm gonna select all four of these paths and select Outline. Then I'm gonna disable the fill. I'm gonna need to go into each of these paths, enable outline, because for some reason you can't enable outline on all four at the same time. Now selecting all four, I'm gonna change the width up to something like 20. After that, I'm gonna disable the fill base just so we can see them. And you'll see we have a problem. There's these lines that are intersecting. So to fix that, we're gonna actually duplicate path four. We're going to enable the fill. Then we're going to rename it to be something like shape mask. I'm going to push command left bracket to drop it underneath everything. Then selecting path copy one, we're going to right click and select add image mask. Then I'm going to drag the shape mask into the image mask. So now you can see we have this line intersecting just in the center. To fix that, go to the left hand side and change it from add over to subtract in the mask blend mode. So now this line should be properly obscured. From there, we can actually get into the animation process. Selecting path copy four, I'm going to come down to the first point offset. I'm going to click on this down arrow and go to add parameter behavior and we're going to select logarithmic. Now we're going to set our start value to 100. So what this is going to do is give us a nice animation where it starts off really quick and then slows down towards the end. However, the duration of the logarithmic animation is set for the entire duration of our project. So we're going to need to shorten that down to two seconds. So move forward to about two seconds in your timeline. Then push O with the logarithmic parameter behavior selected and that will trim it down. So now this animation will take place over two seconds. Now that we have that, select the logarithmic, push command C, then select the path copies and then push command V so that they should all now have the logarithmic animation. So if we play back, they should all animate at the same time. Perfect, we now have our outline base all set up. I'm gonna go ahead and close that down. Now all we're gonna do is actually create clones that are offset from each other to go ahead and colorize this. To colorize it, I'm gonna bring in a palette. So I'm gonna push Command I and I'm gonna locate my color palette. I got this color palette off of coolors.com. I'm gonna move this palette so that it is out of the way and I'm gonna shrink it way down. I'm gonna actually create a new group and bring it out. I'm gonna rename this primary group as icon and we should be set. Okay, so we now have our animation playing through, and what we need to do is select our outline base and push K. So we now have this clone layer. From here, we're gonna go up to our filters, go down to color and select colorize. I'm actually going to disable the outline base and we're only gonna use that for animation purposes just so that the animation is the same across the board. Using the colorize feature, we're gonna click on this eyedropper and select the first color that we want. I'm gonna select this light blue color. So if I press play, you should see that now these lines are being drawn on with that nice light blue color. After that, selecting our clone layer, we're gonna push Command D, and again, selecting our colorize, we're gonna change it to the slightly darker blue color. Now, if we look down in our timeline, we need to find this secondary clone layer. And for the sake of ease, I'm actually gonna rename each of these. I'm gonna name it Outline 1, name the next one Outline 2. So now we're gonna offset each of these outlines. So I'm gonna move forward about 15 frames or so and drag the Outline 2 to that point. So now if I play through, we should see the animation playing out. Now that we have outline two, let's go ahead and push command D once again to duplicate it, select our colorize feature, and we're gonna select the darkest of the colors. We're gonna rename the outline two duplicate to outline three. And again, we're gonna shift that over about 15 frames. Finally, let's do one last outline for this nice looking salmon coral color. 
So I'm gonna push Command D one more time, rename it to Outline 4, and select our Colorize feature, and select that pink color. Now I'm gonna click and drag and bring Outline 4 over 15 more frames, and now they should all be perfectly offset. Now I actually don't really like the offset, so I might scoot these in a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. Perfect, so now we have those all being drawn on. So now we can get into the process of filling in this logo. But really quick, it's time to pay some bills. Envato Elements is changing the game with their incredible subscription service. They offer unlimited access to over 55 million assets. I don't know if you realize how large of a number that is. It is ginormous. They offer fonts, photos, stock footage, music, sound effects, WordPress themes, Final Cut Pro, and Motion 5 templates. They offer a super simple license and your license still counts even after your subscription has ended. If you follow the link in the description, you will get 50% off when selecting the annual subscription. Do yourself a favor, my friends, level up your video editing library and get Envato Elements today. We're going to select our fill base and this time we're going to push K on the fill base and that will give us a clone layer. We're going to drag this clone layer above all of the outlines and we're going to rename it to fill one. Now what's going to be important is that we select our fill base and we give it a mask. So we're going to come to the point where the animation is about ending and I'm actually going to hide this fill. So right to where the animation is about to end, right there. I'm going to actually push shift M to create a visual marker for me to see where the animation is ending. Now we're going to come over here to the masking tools, click this down arrow and select the circle mask. We're going to create a circle mask down in the bottom left hand corner of our logo. Then under the masking settings, we're going to add a keyframe to the radius and under the property settings, we're going to add a keyframe to the position. We're going to move forward a couple frames and then we're going to drag our mask to the upper right hand corner and scale it up so it fits our entire logo. So now if I enable our fill clone, we should see it filling in nicely. Just like so. Now I don't really like the timing on that circle mask, so we're gonna find it here, click on this down arrow, and we'll just shrink up the size of our animation. Now you notice we actually have this outline around our logo, and that's because I forgot to enable the outline on our fill. So go ahead, go into the shape settings and enable the outline for each path. And because I was stupid, I'm also gonna need to change the width up to 20. Okay, so we now have this nice animation playing out over our logo, filling it in. So now if we disable the original fill, we'll jump up to our fill one and we're going to add the colorize feature again. So we'll go down to color, add the colorize in. We're gonna recolor it to be the light blue. Then we'll go ahead and select fill one, push command D, we'll rename it to fill two and colorize it to the next color. Then again, we'll push command D, change the color over to the darkest of colors and we'll rename that to fill three. And once more, we'll do fill four and we'll change it to to that nice coral salmon color. So now we're gonna need to offset each of these fills. I'm gonna leave fill one exactly where it was, then I'm gonna select fill two and drag it over about four frames and do the same with fill three, so on and so forth. And so now we should have that nice animation playing out. So now that we have the icon animation, what we can do is add in a nice background. So I'm gonna go over to the library, go to generators, go down to color solid and bring that in. I'm gonna rename this group to be background. Selecting that layer, I'm gonna push command shift left bracket and that will drop it at the very bottom of all of our layers. Selecting our color solid, I'll go into our inspector and we're gonna select this white color that's in the color palette. Now let's go ahead and select our icon. We'll go into our properties and add a drop shadow. I can extend out the distance a bit and enhance the blur. So now it's got this really nice shadow. Then from there, I'm gonna disable the color palette and we're gonna add in a title. Selecting our icon group, I'm gonna add in a title here. We'll just call it something like Monster Mountain. Then I'm gonna go into our appearance settings and change the color over to that coral pink. Then I'll go into the format settings, center it up, and also increase the size a bit. We'll go into our properties and reset the parameter so that it's right in the center. And then using the Y parameter, we'll shrink it down so it's below our logo. So we need to animate this text coming in. So to do that, we'll go over to our position settings, click this down arrow, find the Y parameter, click add a parameter behavior, and we're gonna select ramp. 
Now we're gonna set our start value to a negative value so that it starts a little bit lower. Then we'll jump into our properties. We'll find the moment that we want the animation to start right in here. We'll push I, then we'll go to where we want the animation to end right about there. We can trim it down with O. And now if we play through, it should animate up just like so. Then I'm gonna go to the beginning of the animation and I'm gonna set the opacity to zero, add a keyframe and then go to the end of the animation and set it to a full 100%. So now it'll fade in nicely. Now it's not quite as smooth as I had hoped. That's because I forgot to go into my behaviors and set the curvature up to a full 100. So it now should be a little bit smoother. Finally, let's go ahead and have it scale up once it's all built in. So to do that, let's go ahead, select our icon, go over to our properties, find the scale, click add a parameter behavior, and we're gonna set this to ramp. Now that we have the ramp, let's go ahead and find the place where we want the animation to start. I'm thinking somewhere right in here. We'll push I to trim the ramp down. Then we're gonna come up to the left. We're gonna change the end value to 20%. So that means that over the duration of this ramp, it is going to grow up 20%. So now what we need to do is push Command-8 so that we can actually see our animation keyframes down here. And I'll drag up our keyframe editor a little bit. We're gonna go change our curvature slider all the way up to a full 100%. Then we're gonna find the end offset and we're gonna drag that up until the animation is nice and short. So in my case, it's 510. So that about wraps it up. Let's go ahead and see our final animation. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy this video about creating a synthwave music visualizer using Apple Motion. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider pressing on the like button, consider subscribing, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.